Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a key strategy for rotational equilibrium problems, where you can set the origin where it will make the problem easier. Set the origin where it's going to eliminate some of the headache for a problem and help you to be able to solve these types of problems. So this is building on a lesson that I've given recently on rotational equilibrium. I'll put a link up in the upper right right about now if you want more information before we begin. But let's go ahead and dive in. So the problem says a uniform ladder of a length given rests against a smooth vertical wall. The mass of the ladder is given and the coefficient of static friction between the ladder and the ground is some value. The wall is frictionless. So that's important. There's no force due to friction between the wall and the ladder itself. Find the minimum angle at which the ladder does not slip. So we're looking for this theta right here. And so let me show you how to approach this. First, I would recommend using the sum of the forces strategy like I've done throughout an entire semester of physics. And that is going to be working the x. So the first line for the sum of the forces strategy is to add up literally the sum of the forces in the x-axis and we really only have two and we're adding them up but one is going to be positive i'm assuming to the right is positive to left is negative up is positive down is negative so that means this force due to friction is going to be positive this normal force that is in the horizontal so that's what i'm labeling right here is going to be negative and that's going to be our first line of the sum of the force strategy i would call this static friction but the college board itself makes no distinction between static and kinetic friction. It's just all treated as general friction, I believe, to reduce the number of variables. So we're just going to call it the force due to friction. So that's the first line of the sum of the forces strategy. The second line is just going to be the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. And that is Newton's second law. And then what we can do that's useful is we can set these two equal to each other. So we do that and we end up with FF minus FN comma H is equal to zero. And now we have proven in terms of the magnitudes at least that these two are equal to each other. Now we don't know at this point more about these things, but we do know that they are equal to each other in magnitude. We'll get more into friction in a bit. We have an equation obviously that we can work with with friction. But building in a very sequential way of how you would solve problems, I want to continue with the strategies that I've shown for the entire year. So let's do the sum of the forces in the y-axis. So we start with that. Again, the sum of the forces in the y, we literally add up the forces in the y. And the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is F equals ma, basically. And this is zero. And so we can set these equal to each other, but this is zero. And as a result, you have proven that these two forces are equal to each other in terms of magnitude once again. And we know something else about Fg. We know that that is Mg. So now we have proven that the normal force that is vertical is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. We were given like the mass of the ladder at the beginning of this problem. It's actually easier if you don't plug in your numbers till the ends because a lot of stuff is just going to cancel out. I will show you that later. So hold off on plugging in any numbers until the end. That's usually good practice for the most part. Anyway, so next we have our friction equation and that's again typically how we solve these problems. And that's because friction can draw on two different axes. Typically, this is going to be in the x, and this is typically in the y axis. And that's the case here. So now we can continue. And this is a little bit of a strange equation because it has a less than or equal to symbol. Normally, the problem, we're going to be able to assume that we have maximum amount of friction. In the way that this is worded for the problem, it says, I believe, the minimum angle that can be before the ladder starts to slip. And that would be assuming our max friction. If we assume we have max friction, then we just change that into an equal sign. And so for most problems, we're going to be able to justify doing that. So we know a couple other things. We know Fn vertical. We have proven that that is mg. So the force due to friction is just mu mg. And we said previously in our sum of our forces work that this was true. And I said, we know more about this. We have an equation. Well, now we can throw that in. So let's go ahead and do that we have proven that Fn horizontal is equal to mu mg. All right. Now, so far, we haven't done anything really different. Like we're in a rotation unit, but we haven't done any rotation. So let's analyze this in terms of rotation. So let's work with torque. Now, what I'm about to talk about next is the crucial strategy for being able to solve these problems. And if you have trouble with everything else or you don't pay attention to everything else, 
and you get this one thing that I would say get this thing right here I'm about to talk about. So if an object is in equilibrium, then the net torque is zero, no matter where we set our origin. So there are three logical places we could set our origin, like maybe over here, or maybe over here, considering torque, like thinking about where is this thing going to rotate? Remember, it's in equilibrium, so it's not rotating at all. So it's up to us, because anywhere we put it, it's going to have zero net torque. So pick an origin that will get rid of multiple torques to make the problem easier, or that will get rid of a force that we simply have no information about, let's say. Now remember that a force applied right at an axis of rotation provides no torque, just as putting a force on the hinge of a door provides no torque, right? So where should we put our origin? Should we put it right here, or right here, or right here? Where do you think? Well, if we want to make the problem as easy as possible, we might as well eliminate the torque from two forces rather than one. And so to do that, let's go ahead and make our origin right over here. And this is the key strategy we're going to do, because if we do this, then we don't have to analyze this torque or this torque. Both of them are now gone, because that is now our origin point. All right, so we continue with our torque work, and we're going to do the sum of the torque strategy very much like the sum of the forces, just the rotational version of that. So I literally have the sum of the torques added up together. Now, this is treated as a negative because that's going to cause a clockwise rotation. This is going to be treated as a positive. It'll cause a counterclockwise rotation. And the first two torques are zero, like we had talked about, so we can just kind of ignore them. And the second line for the sum of the torque strategy is equal to not ma, but i times alpha, which is the rotational version of ma. And then we can set these equal to each other. So this is the moment of inertia. This is angular acceleration. Oh, and one more thing we want to ask ourselves is, is this something or is this nothing? Is the latter accelerating in a rotational sense or not? The answer is no, it's not accelerating, it's not moving at all, so there's zero acceleration here. So this whole term drops out, so when we set these equal to each other, this becomes zero, and we can say this is a true statement. Now to simplify this, we're just going to take this term over here and move it to the other side. This is what I'm calling the sum of the torque strategy, and we have proven that the torque from the normal force in the horizontal is equal to the torque due to gravity. All right. So what does that even mean? Well, let's break down what we mean by torque. So this is one way to calculate torque. It's the first vector, it's the R vector, times this force, but the perpendicular component of that force, and then the same thing applies over here. So let's talk about this. This R vector is really the length of the ladder right here that we're going to use, the complete length. We only want the perpendicular component of that force right here. So we'll talk more about that. The second one, we're going to take half the length. Why? Well, because we're going to assume the force due to gravity is applied right at the center of the object because it's a uniform object. And that's a safe assumption to make because a ladder is pretty symmetric and there's nothing said in the problem about it not being uniform and the problem would be much more complex if it was not uniform, if it was more heavily weighted towards the side or something like that. Nothing is said about that so we assume it's a uniform object and so we want to apply the force due to gravity in terms of torque right at the center. That would be one half the length is where that would be applied and we want the perpendicular components of that force. So that's a little hard to visualize. I've gone ahead and drawn two different triangles here to help you to visualize this. So I was just talking about the force due to gravity. That is going to be this theta right here. So that will give us the force due to gravity perpendicular that we're talking about. That would be this component that we're interested in because that'll be perpendicular to the ladder itself. And then this one over here is a triangle representing what's going on over here. We want this perpendicular components of this force right here. So we're going to need to use the sine function for this triangle and for this force over here. And if we write that out, that would look like this. So this is going to be the result of our work. And before we move on, I do want to talk briefly about the angles involved here. If you're having trouble with the geometry and figuring out which theta you're working with, or are you working with the complement and so on, I guess I would point to the original triangle and notice that our original theta is going to be the larger of those angles. It's not the 90 degrees, but it's larger of the two remaining angles. 
And so because these are similar triangles that we have drawn for FG, the vector of FG and its components, and the other one FN comma H, then you can use the fact that they're similar triangles and look for the larger inner angle there and call that theta, and you're going to be correct. So that's an easy way to sort of figure out which angle you're looking at and if you're using the right angle for the right position or if you are thinking incorrectly. What is something that you notice immediately in terms of the algebra that we can do to simplify the equation? All right, well, hopefully you notice that the R values can be simplified, but because I'm running out of room, I'm going to take that over to the next page and we'll simplify it over here so the R's go away. And next, we do know some things about Fn, comma, H and Fg. And so next we are left with this. So before we continue, I do want to mention what can we do algebraically to simplify the equation at this point? All right, well, hopefully you notice that we've got mg over here, we've got mg over here, so we can cancel that out of both sides, and then we will be left with this. Now, at this point, you could say, hey, I'm still stuck because I don't know where to go with this. It feels like I've got two unknowns here. I don't know what to do with this. And at first glance, that seems true, but we can treat these two simple trig functions as one equally simple trig function if we know what we're doing. So you may or may not have had this in trig, but what we're going to do is try to isolate sine of theta over cosine of theta. And I will show you what that reduces to in a moment. But if we do that, we end up with 1 over 2 times mu. And so sine of theta over cosine of theta. Again, you may recognize this from a trig class. If you don't, that is okay. I'm going to show you what to do. So assume you don't recognize what that would be. And what we're going to say, well, what would the sine be? Well, that's the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, and cosine would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So notice that we have something divided by hypotenuse up top and something divided by hypotenuse down below. So we can cancel out both of those hypotenai, and you'll be left with opposite over adjacent is equal to this. Now, what do you think the opposite leg over adjacent leg of a right triangle would be equal to? Well, that's going to be the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta of that right triangle is equal to that 1 over 2 mu. Now, we actually don't want the tangent of theta. We want theta by itself. So how do we get theta by itself? All right, well, what you're going to do is take the arc tangent. It's kind of like inverse tangent, but we call it arc tangent. So the arc tangent of both sides, because algebra, and so you want to get rid of that first function right here. That will cancel out this first tangent function over here. So we're going to be left with theta is equal to the arc tangent of what we had previously. Now we can plug in numbers. So notice how much easier this is to work with if we wait to plug in numbers until the very end of this. So we go ahead, plug in our numbers, and we end up with a theta of 59 degrees. And that's exactly how you would solve one of these problems. I do want to remind you of one thing, and that is this right here. The key part of the lesson, aside from the sum of the forces in the x, sum of the forces in the y, sum of the torques, all of those things are important, but a key part of the lesson is deciding where to put the origin of an object that's in rotational equilibrium using the second condition for equilibrium, understanding that the net torque is equal to zero wherever we put the origin in this system. So we might as well put it in the most complex place to simplify the problem the most. So that was the key strategy here that I want you to take away from this, aside from everything else. But in any case, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.